Hello, Elixir community. Today, I am going to do a quick tutorial that came up in one of the projects that I'm working on. And the question that I will attempt to solve is how can I capture the user's local time zone and thereby be able to convert dates and times that are in UTC to the user's time zone, no matter where they're using their browser from. So in order to demonstrate this, I created a basic Phoenix uh, live view project. I'm not going to show uh, the process of doing that, uh, but basically at the root, we're going to be routed to this module called time page. Um, and here for brevity, I'm using the render function to render the contents of this, um, of this, of this page. Now, taking a look at what, um, what is going to be displayed. I'm just going to have current time and then I'm going to uh, show the assigns time. And the way I'm going to create the assigns time is just by using uh, datetime.utc now, assigning that uh, to the uh, time assigns on mount of the live view. So let's go ahead and spin up the server and see what that looks like. Okay, now that the server is running, we're going to flip over to the website. And what you're going to see is you're going to see the time getting updated twice. So you see how it was uh, 1953, 40, uh, 37, and then 1953, 40. What's going on there? Well, remember that when you have a Phoenix Live View, the mount function gets called twice and updates the contents of the page twice. The first time is on the HTTP request being made, and the second time is on the Live View uh, uh, WebSocket connecting in. Now you can see that the printed time has this, looks like this and has a Z on the end. Z is short for Zulu and that refers to it being uh, at UTC uh, time. In many operations, you're going to want this to uh, actually reflect what the user has. And so in that situation, we may not necessarily want uh, that to be uh, in Zulu time. So how are we gonna do this? Well, if we're gonna capture information from the user, we're probably gonna to need to use a, uh, a uh, Phoenix Live View hook. Um, to put it briefly, the browser has access to user localization information. And what we're gonna do is we're going to read that user localization information and send it back to the server and then go ahead and use that information to modify um, the output. What I'm not gonna go over is doing things like storing that in a database or putting it into cookies so that you can get some either user persistent or database persistent information. Um, but once you see how to do this in JavaScript, it should be fairly straightforward to figure out how to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and write some JavaScript. Typically when you're creating a hook, you're gonna to wanna to create a hook in app.js. And we usually by convention will create a hooks object to store the information, store the available hooks for the page. So const hooks equals we're gonna do an empty object here. And then we're going to set a member called local time zone, which is the hook that we will use. So hooks.local time zone equals and then the local time zone uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create the mounted callback and the mounted callback is going to grab information from the intel so uh, let time zone equals date time format. And you can see here that the uh, autocorrect 
the auto completion has helpfully uh, filled that in for us. And so the intel namespace has a member function called datetime format, which returns an object, which itself has a member function called resolved options, which in turn has a property called time zone. And what that time zone is, is a string version of what the time zone is. And we're gonna see that in a moment. To communicate that information back to the server, we need to use push event. And what push event is, is something that is created whenever you make a one of these hooks, um, uh, it will get bound to an object um, that has a push event method. The first parameter is just gonna be a string which gives the name of the event that's gonna go down the pipe and back to the, back to the server. And the second is a set of customizable uh, parameters that you can add onto the event. So the last thing that we need to do is put hooks into our live socket. Um, and the way we do that is by going to this place here where the live socket has gotten, um, gotten initialized and the live socket constructor can take an optional parameter called hooks here And that will allow the socket to have access to all the hooks that we have defined. Note that this hooks variable didn't have to be called hooks. We could have called it anything, but just typically for a Phoenix project, this is what we do to avoid confusion. Okay, now let's see what happens when we look at the web page and refresh it. And nothing has happened. That's because the hooks um, store here in the live socket is really just a placeholder. And in order to actually use a hook, we need to create a DOM element that binds to that particular hook. Let's go ahead and do that. The way we do that is to create just a generic div and we use the phx-hook attribute and we assign it the name, which in this case was local time zone. And let's close that div. Now, what happens when we try to recompile it? Note that there is a compilation error here. Let me get myself out of the way. And it says the attribute PHX hook requires the ID attribute to be set. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix that. We're gonna set the ID to time zone. All right, now let's refresh. And we see that it's stuck in this loop and it refreshed a few times. And if we look at our logs, um, it says that UTC web .time page handle event is undefined or private. So that's right here. And note that it says that we called it with set time zone and this particular object as the parameters, time zone, the JSON time zone mapping to the time zone America, Indiana, tell city. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that handle event uh, function. And then we know that we're going to pass it the time zone parameter and then of course the socket. And then we're just gonna go ahead and do a no reply socket. Uh, and then let's just ignore the time zone for now. Okay, so uh, that should at least stop it from crashing. And note this time we did not get a crash. Great, so um, what we can do is we can in fact like debug this Oops. And uh, when we debug it, we should be able to see that it is correctly communicated the time zone that I'm in back to, back to the server. So now the server is aware of what time zone we exist in. Great. So um, next I need to actually implement a sort of uh, a function that will take that time zone and do something with it. 
So um, what we're going to do is we're going to do case date time shift zone. Uh, and we're going to shift the time zone to the supplied time zone. And if it's OK time, we're going to assign the time. And if it's not, just do nothing. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and spy on what this function actually returned. OK, great. So let's refresh. OK, no crashes. But note that we got this error, UTC only time zone database. And what we're going to do next is we are going to fix that so that we are using a time zone database at all. Key thing to remember is that Elixir does not ship with a time zone database. Why doesn't Elixir ship with a time zone database in the standard library? Um, because those, they're pretty like heavyweight um, data files that contain lots of historical information. Um, and that information can change. Um, for example, and, and it does change all the time, partially because of sometimes physical things, like if uh, the International Time Commission decides that uh, we need to add some leap seconds, that can change the time zone database. Um, but even something like a political uh, change, for example, you know, a local jurisdiction could decide to move which time zone it exists in, or an entire country can uh, change what how its time zones are, are structured. And as a result, keeping that up to date uh, with releases of the standard library is not really something that is desirable for the Elixir programming language to do. And so for that reason, we punt it off to uh, a library to solve for us. So uh, Elixir does ship with a dummy time zone database that only honors UTC. And that's why we have this error UTC only time zone database. OK, so how do we set up a time zone database? Well, I'm going to use a library called TZ. Um, this is the one that I tend to use. Uh, and here is how we're going to add it. I like it because it seems to be like a more correct version of a time zone database software than TZ data, which is also a fairly popular choice. Um, so obviously, next we're going to do mix depths.get. And that will pull the TZ dependency into our project. OK, the last thing that we have to do is we need to actually configure Elixir to use that time zone database. And here's how we do this. Oops, easy that time. Of course, you could put this in individual uh, configs as well, or you could put this above. Um, but this is just uh, probably the best way to do it at compile time. All right, so let's go ahead and start this up again. So now you can see on the first hit, it does drop the the standard UTC type zone. But then when the WebSocket connects, um, it goes ahead and changes this to be um, uh, to be in my local time zone. And if we check the time, you can indeed see that the website claims that it's 210 and my local time is also 210. So uh, in short, that is one way of using LiveView to get the time zone information for a particular user's connection. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and uh, I'll see you soon with some more videos.